Hi everyone, this is Sarah, and welcome to my 50 Christmas Craft Series for 2019. I'll be showing you how to make 50 different Christmas crafts this year, and I hope you'll be back for all of them because we'll be having a lot of fun. Today, I'm making these adorable glazed clay gift tags that can double as personalized ornaments for years to come. If you like what you see here, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button below. If you know anyone that would like this video or my channel, please share this link because every view and every subscriber really helps enable me to keep creating videos for you. And if you'd like to see more of what I can do, you can follow me on Instagram or take a look at my blog. I also have a Facebook group if you'd like to share all the wonderful things you make. The links to all of these are in the description below. For today's project, the main things I'm going to be using is some air dry clay, a fondant roller, and some various cookie cutters and rubber stamps and anything you can pick up that you might like to use for, for texture or for decorating your air dry clay uh, gift tags. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a ball of the air dry clay that's a good size to work with. I'm going to knead it just a little bit. Then I'm going to flatten it out just a bit and lay it on my surface, which is just some freezer paper. And the reason that I like the fondant rollers for this purpose is because they have these spacers and you can set the spacers for the depth that you want your finished um, clay to be or fondant or dough, whatever it is that you're rolling out. And I just keep working back and forth move my clay around a little bit and we're just going to work it until we have it the depth of the spacer all right and that looks pretty good now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a texture plate and your texture plate can be anything you want it to be it can be a large uh, rubber stamp that you have, silicone stamp. Um, if you work with um, polymer clay at all, you can pick up texture plates in the polymer clay section of your craft store. All right, now I'm going to take my texture plate and I am just going to lay it right over my air dry clay here and just give a little bit of pressure to adhere it and then I'm going to go over it with a roller. Now you can absolutely use your fondant roller if you'd like um, if you remove the the spacers on it. I'm just going to use this brayer that I have and I'm going to push it down. I want to get some nice indentations into my polymer clay and this is going to flatten out a little bit your air dry clay but not too bad alright and now we have some beautiful texture there I don't know how well you can see it um, on the white against white here but it does have some beautiful texture to it and then I'm just going to take my cookie cutter which in this case is just a circle and I'm going to cut down through our clay here. Alright, now for the next step I am going to use some lettering that I have and I'm going to put the names on the ornament tags of the people that the gifts are for. Now, as you can see here, the letters appear in my lettering kit um, backwards when I put them in, but as we turn them around and we stamp, they will come out in the correct order. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish stamping these, and then we will move on to the next step. Okay. 
Now to make the holes in the ornaments, I'm just going to use the end of a paintbrush and you can use anything you like that would make a hole. You don't want to make it too near the top because you don't want it to break. And I'm just pushing it down in and twisting it gently back and forth, in and out. And this just moves the clay away from the center. All right, and now we're just going to move the outside clay from around the ornaments. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to take my finger and smooth the back side of this, these ornaments down. And then these are ready to set, and we're going to let these dry. Okay, now these are almost ready to set and let dry, but I'm going to take my paintbrush, now that I've picked it up, and just push this through again, just to make sure that that hole goes all the way through. Again, twisting back and forth so I don't harm the ornament. And then just kind of smooth that a little bit on the back side as it dries, and then we can come back in and sand that down when we're done. And I'm just going to set this aside to dry. All right, for the second one, we're going to do a very similar process. I am just going to choose a different texture plate here, and I'm going to lay it down, and using gentle pressure, I'm just going to again Alright, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Now, for this one, I'm going to use a larger um, cookie cutter, and I'm just going to lay this down over the best part of the texture here. And just push down, and then we're just going to remove these outside pieces while the cookie cutter is still in place. going to very gently work this out of the cookie cutter. There we go. And again, just smooth down that back. All right, look at this. This is gorgeous already. I absolutely love this. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to again just find the center point and skewer the hole for the gift tag through here. And these, these again they can be used as Christmas ornaments but I love using them as gift tags. It's a personalized way to Give them a keepsake along with their gift. That one's not quite wanting to come through. Let's see what we got going. There we go. Just had to work that a little bit more. All right, and this one we are just going to go ahead and let dry just like this, and then we will come back in and add the name after it's dry to the back side because I love the way this looks just as is. Okay, for this last one, this is a clay cutting set that I've had for several years, but I want to show you how this works. You can just lay this leaf ornament, or I'm sorry, this leaf cutter right down in the center here of your your air dry clay where you've cut it, and again, removing the scrap from the outside. Okay, and again, 
we're just going to have to carefully remove the cutter from our leaf here. And again, I'm just going to smooth down these outside edges before we move on to the next step. Just no particular reason other than that's just the order I like to do it in. There we go. Now this particular leaf cutting set comes with several different leaf cutters. Here we have two holly leaves in different sizes and two other leaves that it comes with. And that also comes with these centers that you can cut down the center of your leaf. So the leaves with the more variegation, or I'm sorry, the more um, stems uh, you would use these pieces for. And for the holly leaves, you have these single longer stem pieces that you can lay down over your holly leaf. So we can just lay that right down over there and push down until we get that stem running right down the center of our holly leaf. Alright, now for this I'm going to go ahead and stamp a name in the front of this again. There we go. And now I have that name in there and ready to go. I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to run that this way. Taking a little bit of care to look down through the center here and kind of get it centered where I want it. All right, and there we go. We have my daughter's name right there. And now I'm going to again come back and put the hole for the ornament for the gift tag right there push that right down through there and there we have our gift tag with the name on the front and it can be used as an ornament and we will go ahead and finish embellishing this after it has dried. Now I'm actually placing these on the a toaster oven tray because you can heat up and quicken the drying process for air dry clay and to do this you want to stick it in an oven you want to set it for 225 to 250 degrees for just a few minutes depending on the size of the ornaments. So these I'm going to stick in for about five minutes. I'm going to let them cool a little bit, check them, and see how we're doing on the drying process. Now that the ornaments have had time to dry, I'm going to go ahead and start sanding them. And for this step in the process, I'm just using a fine grit sandpaper. I don't remember exactly what the grid is on these, but I'm just going around the outside edges making sure that they have a nice smooth edge and a finished look and feel to them. I am going to go ahead and attempt to sand the backs a little bit, but I'm not as worried about the backs um, because they're not really a side that we're going to see and I'm not um, going to be finishing the backs in any way. Now for the holly ornament, I am going to use a Prismacolor marker. It is an alcohol-based marker, and if you don't have any of these, you can use Sharpies or anything you would like. I do like the Prismacolor because they really do not leave any, um, any coloring lines. It looks pretty much like a solid color when you're done with it. So I, I really love using these particular markers and I am loving the way that it's soaking into the top but it's leaving a nice crisp edge along the stem of the holly leaf and the lettering that I have um, impressed into the leaf before it dried. So I am absolutely loving the way that this is coming out. Now that I have my holly leaf colored in, 
I'm going to go in and use some DecoArt Triple Thick Glaze and I am going to glaze the top of the ornament and this will give it that shiny effect that uh, makes it look like it's ceramic or porcelain or, or whatever it is. It looks like a glazed finish and uh, what I'm going to do is put some of that, pour some of it out into uh, my small paint palette here and then I'm going to add some alcohol inks to give it some color because I don't want it to be a clear glaze I want it to be a green over green glaze and I think this will look really cool in the end For my next ornament, I'm going to go ahead and use this green glaze over the white air dry clay and as you can see this comes out just beautiful as well. It's um, more of a yellow green than I probably would have used um, and if I did it again I would add a little bit more of a green color to it but um, I still like the way this turns out. It still has a very country look to it and this colored glaze brings out so beautifully the lettering and all the texture on our ornaments that um, I really can't complain about it at all. I mean look at this it just when it dries it's still going to have that shiny look to it. It'll be completely um, clear it won't have any of the milky look to it it does right now and you just you can't beat this technique. For my next couple ornaments. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the exact same process with different colors, just adding a little bit of the triple thick glaze to the paint palette and adding different colors of alcohol ink to the glaze until I get a color I like and then just glazing the dried ornaments with those colors and allowing them to dry.
Now, I had also made a snowman and candy cane uh, using cookie cutters, and for the candy canes here, I used the side of a skewer and just pressed in some straight diagonal lines to give it the look of a candy cane. And now that they're dry, I am going back in and I'm painting them with a red paint marker, um, every other diagonal line, of course. And so this will give you another idea of how you can go ahead and color your air dry clay before you glaze it um, to get that finished glazed look. And so I'll be doing this and I will also show you the snowman, which I went ahead and detailed um, with his charcoal eyes and mouth and his little carrot nose that were painted on there. And then I went ahead and just glazed them with some clear, uh, of some, I'm sorry, I just glazed them with some clear deco art glaze. So here are the finished candy canes and snowman. I really love the way these came out as well. And now I'm just going to go ahead and give them a coat of the deco art and I'm just using it straight out of the jar without tinning it at all. It'll just give it that that highly glazed look just like the other ones. You can see how nice and shiny those are up at the top. They're all dry now. Now as a final step on this holly leaf, I'm just going to go back and add three holly berries and for these I'm going to be using just some flat back rhinestones in red and hot gluing those on. And it just gives this holly leaf a little bit of a finishing touch since it is a little bit plainer than the other ornaments at this point. Now I'm taking one of my raft wrapped presents and I am going to go ahead and make a bow and use my gift tag on it so you can get an idea of how the finished gift will look when all is said and done. And to do this I'm using the same technique I used earlier um, in my blue and white Christmas swag video. Um, and if you haven't seen that yet go back and look at it. The finished product is absolutely gorgeous in the end. Now here I am cutting about 13 inch strips of four different types of ribbon and I am cutting three strips of each kind of ribbon and we're going to alternate these back and forth. I'm sorry that a lot of it's off screen. I didn't realize this while I was cutting the the ribbon and it was curling back up on me so it was giving me a lot of issues. Um, but I did end up four types of ribbon three strips of each about 13 inches long to fit on the top of this particular gift. Now I'm taking the ribbon and I'm folding it in half but I'm not creasing it and I am just alternating the different ribbons that I've cut in my hand and holding them while I layer them and I am just doing three layers and they're going to be all in the same order, just laying the ribbons out in the same, in each layer. And when I get done with that, I'm going to go back and pinch about a third of the way up um, all the ribbons. And using a chenille stem, I'm just going to twist those off really tight. And then you're going to see me just bunching and adjusting the different ribbons around until we have a nice, full, interesting look. And then at that point, I am going to wrap one of the ribbons around the package itself to give it a nice finished look. I'm going to hot glue that longer stem of the ribbon onto the bottom of the package and using my Chanel stem, I'm going to attach everything together.
All right, and here's the finished product. I wasn't going to take an in video, but my dog Puck decided he absolutely had to get in on the fun. So I just wanted to add how curious he was about this when I was getting ready for the final photo shoot. I hope you enjoyed this product, this, pro this project, and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that like button as well as share it with friends who may also enjoy it. If you like my channel, hit that subscribe button and when the notification bell pops up, be sure you hit that as well so you never miss a video. And as always, have a great day and stay crafty.